Hello, this is Heather Hoffman and today I have a fun technique to create a basket weave background on your card using some um, reverse confetti, actually one reverse confetti cover panel, um, the vertical stripes cover panel. And what I've done is I've taken the negative strips that come out of it and used them to weave crosswise through the stripes to create my basket weave pattern. Now you notice on the die I discovered as I started doing it that the very two on the outside are just a tiny, tiny bit thinner strips than the rest. Um, I found it was a perfect fit. If you didn't use those, you got a little more full, but it's barely noticeable. Um, but you need exactly 14 strips to create the basket weave, and this die conveniently cuts out seven. So I die cut it two times, and then I'm just using, this is also a great way if you use this as a stripe panel for something else, save your negative cuts, um, and then you can create this easily. Now what I'm doing is just each strip weaving. Um, if you've ever done any weaving, it's just over, under, over, under, and alternate each one to create the basket weave pattern. I'm going to speed up this part a little bit, just um, in each one as I weave it through, and then I'm just pushing it into place down against the other one. So I'll speed this up a little so we can get through this part and on to the next step. But isn't it a fun dimensional background? Um, and kind of want to do this and just cut a bunch of them and sit and do them while I'm watching a movie. It's kind of relaxing and just almost therapeutic. Uh, something fun about just slowly weaving in to create this background. All right, now as I finish this last piece, um, you notice how nice and tight, and there's a little tiny bit of a gap in between because I did use two of the thinner pieces in this, um, but it, it works just fine and quite well. Now I'm using a glue pen. You could use tape, glue, liquid, um, liquid glue, or like an adhesive tape runner. And actually, as I did this, I don't think it held super well where I put the glue because I didn't press down long enough to hold it into place. But once you trim the excess off and then um, tape it down onto your card base, the tape kind of holds everything in place. So this step probably isn't necessary. I just wanted to make really sure that everything was held in place. And then we use my paper trimmer, trimmer and just trim off the excess on the side, um, lining it up carefully. You could trim it a little smaller, but I just lined it up to get the extra off of each side. Now I'm going to move on and add the rest of the embellishments on my card front. And I'm using tall blooms. I've already stamped and die cut them and colored them. And then circles and scallops to die cut a piece of uh, smoke cardstock. And I've stamped and heat embossed my sentiments from Simply Sentiments. Um, I love all the sentiments on that stamp set. Kind of just a great all occasion to go with whatever you need. I'm going to mount my sentiment piece with some foam adhesive fitting in place where I want the tall bloom to fit. And then instead of putting the foam adhesive all over the tall bloom, because then it's gonna bump into the edge of the scallop, I like to fit my little foam adhesive pieces kind of around, um, lining up to make sure that they'll fit underneath. And then pull the adhesive tape off and put it in place. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other card to finish off. I hope you give this background a try. It's, like I said, it's very fun to do and kind of just a, a fun different way to stretch your dies and, um, get some new use out of them. And these tall blooms, I'm pretty sure I can't get enough of them. They're so fun and elegant and you can change them up so much just by the colors and um, give them more of a vintage look or more of a modern look. They're really great for just about any card. All right, there we go. All finished. Thanks so much for coming by today. Hope you enjoyed and give this a try sometime. Have a great day.